Just an outstanding year for Michigan State. Already 10 Big Ten wins, 20 overall. You see the net ranking is top 25. Autumn Johnson has Michigan State projected as a number seven seed with three quad one wins already on the resume this year. And with that, it is time for today's big interview as we head to East Lansing. Welcome in first year head coach Robin Fralick. Robin, first and foremost, we appreciate the time. It has been a terrific year so far. So congrats to you and the Spartans on everything you've accomplished. Thank you. Thanks for having me. How has the first year in the league as a head coach compared to what you expected when you came in? It's <clears throat> it's as challenging as I thought. It's as, you know, and the challenging piece is a really fun piece, too. So um, I think I'm still learning as we go, but I'm really impressed with the level of players and the level of coaching. I know every coach sets goals. Some they make public, some they just keep in the team room. As you took over this program, how quickly did you realistically believe a 20-win season was? I, I don't think I just I went there. I think we kept our, our vision and our we zoomed in on every day, and I think we really focused. When you take over a new group, you can really focus on what does today look like? How do we get better today? How do we build our culture today so I think as a staff we were we've been able to zoom in and not really try to project who we could be um, you know I tell our team all the time you know don't let other people write our story I think we've been really really empowered by writing our story and kind of figuring out who we are but uh, they've bought into that so um, the day-to-day -day process has has led to some things that I don't know if we knew were possible um, but now as as we're writing our story I think we're still figuring out what we're capable of. It's always great when you're exceeding other people's expectations, but not your own. You sit just a half game out of fourth place in the league. And of course, you get inside the top four at the end of the year. You get that coveted double bye in the Big Ten tournament. Yeah. How important is that to your team, even if you're not necessarily thinking about what the standings are at the end of the year? Well, I think it, it matters, right? The double buy is, is a coveted thing in our in our league. I think it means you've had a really good season. And, and at this point, we also just know let's just control what we can control and you know the rest of the league there's still two games left where a lot can can shift and turn um but yeah it, our team knows that that is something that um that we have as a possibility and i think at this time of the year you've got to keep keeping those small um tangible goals in front of you to to keep your team on track robin a week ago sunday you beat michigan for the second time this season only the super seniors on this team had enjoyed that before how special was that specifically for the Michiganders on this team including yourself well that game is different and we all know that and our team prepares like it's different we um, compete like it's different it's a great rivalry game our our seniors you know had had that experience the, our other players had not and so to be able to, to sweep Michigan really means something to our school um, and to our program and Michigan's been a great team and a great program so um, and it was a great game. It was a great game, gigantic runs, and I thought our team really held on strong. And, you know, with Mo Joyner and Tori Osmond as our super seniors, you know, we felt really compelled by them all year. Um, they've really given us our best and really just as a team, you know, we really we were very happy for them to, to be able to finish out their career with a win at Michigan. I know that was fun for you. And for viewers, your team is really fun to watch. You're one of only six in the nation to average more than 84 points per game. I'm curious, for you, where did that philosophy come about? The high-scoring, high-volume offensive philosophy where you want your team to push the pace at all times? Well, I think the game of basketball is, is really fun when you get a group of people to play together. And, and, you know, the reality is when you can get five people to make the right play and make the right pass and share the ball, uh, good things happen and it, it, it's funny um, the other day yesterday we were watching film and I was telling him how I watched my my I was at my 10 year old son's tournament on Sunday and you know they, they're a pretty good passing team but I still get on them about taking good shots and you know one of our girls started laughing she's like oh you know coach Fralick she'll let you know if you don't take a good shot <laughs> um, so it, at least it's consistent you know we talk a lot of times about let's get a better shot um, and the reality is when a, whole, when a group of people buy in to getting the best shot for the team, um, you score more. And so that's something we've worked hard at as a group is decision making and taking good shots and, and then getting in the gym and, and working on it. Because it's one thing to get a good shot, but it's another thing to make it. So um, our team's been really diligent about spending time on their game and, you know, being an open shooter is an important part of being able to play at this level. 
to that point, your team just broke the program record for most three-pointers made in the most recent win over Rutgers. There's a difference between saying, take a good shot, and the players in the moment when you're facing a good defender, when you're in a critical situation in a game, actually taking the good shot. So what can you do in practice to kind of simulate those moments for your team? Well, some of it is the way we play our offense creates shots that that we have an expectation around, right? There's a predictability with those shots. Um, and, and the other thing is being able to make them. And then and then we talk a lot about a good shot, you know, and, and, and I just in practice, it's it's a consistency piece of get a better shot. You know, if we don't take a good shot or we take a shot when we've got two on us or when helps come, I, I, I just get a better shot. And when your your team buys into that and, you know, we've gotten a group of a group that has found, you know, passing's cool. Making a good pass and making an extra pass has become a really fun part of how we play, and our team has has, has bought into that. So it's just it's something we work on every day. And um, in our style of playing and our system, we give kids a lot of freedom to make decisions, and we're just constantly giving them feedback if those are the right decisions. The stats back that up. In conference games, you're the only team in the Big Ten without a score inside the top 10, but with three inside the top 25. So how does that kind of buttress what you're talking about regarding the chemistry and the unselfishness of this particular group? Well, and everyone touches it, right? There's, there's, a, there's a fun piece to that. Everybody feels part of it. And, you know, we've had two subs, too, that are playing 20, 25 minutes a game who are scoring. Uh, both are almost scoring double digits as well. So we, we've talked a lot about, we, you know, we almost feel like we have seven starters um, who, who contribute. So we've got to keep doing it. You know, it's a, it's a fun way to play, but it's a way that you got to stick with. And when everybody feels like people are making the right play and taking the right shots, there's a contagiousness to that. There's an enthusiasm to that. There's a joy to that. Um, and we're going to work hard to keep at it. Now, those three players inside the top 25, Mo Joyner, who you already mentioned, Julia Ayrault, D.D. Hageman, I, I want to start with Julia because I think she is such an underrated player and her ability to score inside and outside provides what for your team when you are in the half court? I know you push a lot, but especially when you're in the half court, her ability to do that gives you the opportunity to do what? Well, she's she's such a mismatch, and, and we played her in a new position this year. And in the position she's in, she's just a tough matchup. You know, we put her in a lot of ball screens. She can pop. She can short roll. She can long roll. Um, she creates a lot of space with her skill set. And it's kind of funny because a lot of people have said, oh, you know, she's had to adjust or play a new position. And, and we really feel more like she found her position. Like this season, she really found um, a great, great spot for her. So I'm proud of her. If you look at where she's come from, where she was last year, I mean, she's got to be one of the most improved players in the country. Um, and, and she's obviously very, very critical to what, what we can do. And she creates a lot of space, especially in her, her position on the court. Robin, I want to finish with what will be your final home game of the year against Illinois it comes up on Thursday. What do you hope the seniors who are playing not just their final home game this season, but the final home game of their careers take away from their time in East Lansing and specifically this last year with you? Well, I I'm just so proud of them. Um, they're kids that have, have had some really you know, interesting, tough journeys, good journeys. They've They've been injured. Um, they've had COVID seasons. They've had a coaching change. So I think I'm most proud of their resilience, their durability. They're, they're true Spartans. I mean, Mo and Tori both absolutely love and adore Michigan State. And I know with them staying with, with us as a new coaching staff, I'm just, I'm just really grateful. I thank them at least once a week um, for staying and, and believing in us. And our staff feels very, very compelled by them. They make us feel, you know, we want to make sure we're doing our best and we're the most prepared we can be because of how much they have given to this program. So um, I'm, I'm just, I'm really proud of them. Um, they're kids that show up every day and, and consistently work hard. Um, and I'm excited that for what they've been able to do this last year and th their senior night will definitely be a special night, not just for our team, but for our fans. Our fans have really uh, embraced them. So um, we're excited that we get to celebrate them. And that is an 8 Eastern tip on Thursday, a game you can see right here on the Big Ten Network. Robin, we look forward to watching that game. Look forward to watching your team next week in Minneapolis at the Big Ten Tournament and then beyond in the NCAA Tournament as well. Michigan State Head Coach Robin Freilich, we appreciate you being with us on Big Ten today. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Go Green.